Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. Where the focus is painting loose, soft, painterly animals, although I do digress sometimes and paint other things as well. And in today's tutorial, I just wanna share with you four tricks that I really like. The first tip that I wanna share with you is using dry cleaning pad that drafters use to keep their drawings clean and smudge free. And so what you do is you take this and it has bits of little bits of eraser in it. So first you twist it and you see all the little bits of eraser that's fallen on my painting. Then what you're doing is you're rubbing these little tiny bits of eraser around on your painting and it'll lighten up your lines just a little bit without smudging them. And this is a great way to get rid of smudges as well. And drafters use these a lot apparently. And you just wanna lighten your drawing to the point where you can just see the lines well enough to paint. And they will guide you, but they won't be domineering or show through too much in the finished painting. And then you just take a brush, you can take a drafting brush or a big brush like this, So then you have lighter lines without smudges and it's just a really delicate way to erase your line drawing. Now I need to sweep. <laughs> All right, now we can put the masking on. I'm gonna use this great little tool. It's called a ruling pen. Thank you to Maria Rosinski for reminding me to use this. And the trick I realized, I put two and two together when I watched Maria Rosinski's recent tutorial about how she gets really fine little whiskers for her cat paintings. And I've been admiring her whiskers for a long time and just wondering how the heck she does it. And she recently put out a video about how she waters down her masking and then uses one of these ruling pens. So I was so appreciative that she shared that information. This trick is to add a little bit of water to your masking. So this is about a tablespoon. I'm gonna add about a half tablespoon to this almost full bottle of masking. It will not hurt your masking at all. And I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit. And also remember your masking fluid does go bad. So when it stops smelling like ammonia, it's bad and you need to get a new bottle. Got this dipped in a little bit of masking. You can widen this or narrow it. So I'm just gonna dip it in, get the excess off. I'm gonna do a little practice down here. And you see how nice and thin, if you go fast especially, you'll get a really nice fine line. And of course, some will have clumps on the end, but after you're done painting, you can fix some of those. Put some glints in the eyes. You wanna let your mask completely dry, you paint over the painting, and then at the very end of the painting process, that's when you take your masking off and you can use a crepe eraser to remove your masking without smudging anything or making a mess. All right, this next technique that I really love to use, I've used this for a long time, which is painting something and then scrubbing it away to give it a loose, dreamy look. So I went and dug through all my old paintings to find something that I think would demonstrate this well. So what I'm gonna do is get out my handy dandy scrubber, my larger one that I have. This is a size eight Zen Royal and Langnickel stiff scrubber. Be sure to check out my description for links to all kinds of different supplies that I love. So I'm just gonna re-moisten this old painting. Let's scrub, let's, let's be aggressive. <laughs> you know, let's just, let's just do this thing. And okay, so I did some scrubbing. I'm gonna even it out. Do you see how that just makes it more dreamy? I'm gonna completely ameliorate this side of the ear so that we have a light on light edge now, don't we? And I'm just gonna soften a lot of these edges. So I'm scrubbing. Do you see how that ear looks so much more dreamy now? And not so stiff. Love that. And then later you can go back in and paint in a little bit. But this ear, now you can see this ear really needs that. I'm gonna completely ameliorate that edge and then some of this. And then just blend and soften. Okay, 
Let's try another technique I recently saw on a flower painting channel. The channel is Deborah Lynn Rosenbach, Watercolor and Mixed Media. And what she did, let me get my whole painting wet so that I can take advantage of this idea. And what she does is take a tube of paint that has paint on the edge and she just kind of scribbles. So I'm just gonna try it. It works better if your paint, your paper is a little moist. Loosen up that edge there. So you can loosen up edges, especially on like an animal like this, just especially where there's hair. I'm gonna spray this with water. And then I'm gonna put some more scribbles like along here. Loosen it up. This was a pretty stiff painting. Look how much pretty texture that adds. I have added some bonus footage for my Patreon students. So if you join my Patreon, you can get access to all the extra little things that I did to improve this painting. For this last bonus tip, I'm gonna show you how I problem solved painting the background trees in this somewhat complicated commission painting of this Scottish fold cat. I've never painted a background this way, so I thought it would be fun to share some of the process with you all. I'll be uploading all the real-time footage with voiceover to my Patreon if you're interested on how I problem solved other complicated elements, namely the ironwork table, which hint, hint, I use stencils. Also, there's so many different elements in this painting that a big part of the problem solving process was just how to pull it all together to make it all hang together well. So be sure to join my Patreon to see how I did all that in this painting. But let's talk about how I painted the foliage specifically. I'm going to use these special spray bottles. They're called dot bottles. When you spray them, they make splats of color. So they're great for painting sand textures, foliage textures, and other natural textures. What I do is I put about milk consistency paint in these bottles and I spray them in a foliage pattern on the background. And you see I put pieces of paper on top of the cat so no paint gets on the cat. Then the next thing you see me do is take a misting spray bottle with clear water in it and mist that foliage a little bit so that the little dots of paint join together and make a more natural looking foliage pattern. I don't have footage of this in this tutorial, but if you join my Patreon, you'll see me use toilet paper. I lay the toilet paper on top of the wet painting and then pull it off to remove excess water. After it's completely dry, I'll go over the whole background with a wash of tea consistency blue to push the background further back and bring the cat forward. Then after I did that, it kind of covered up some of this foliage that I sprayed on. So I went on to paint a few more foliage details and I might even do some more spray bottle work to bring the whole thing together. It's not done as of this recording. So the picture you saw of the painting is not the finished painting, but it is very close. So I'm holding my breath and hoping that my client likes it. And you can probably find updates about that process in my community tab. So be sure to check out my community tab for lots of fun things that I put over there. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially those of you who are still here because when you watch to the end, it tells the algorithm you love me and I need you all to love me so that I can keep growing. So thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. All those things really help me grow this channel. And I really, truly appreciate each and every one of you for watching. And now go watercolor your world.